All right, let's get back into it. So here's our basic sketch we did. Now here's the fun part. Client, if you're doing this for a client, if you're doing this for yourself, whatever, someone, you or someone else approves, says yes, that's a go for that emote, I like that emote. What next? Well now, we've got all the emote perfectly in a group, which you may have labeled sketch. We make a new group, make a new layer in there. And we turn down the group one, which was your sketch layer, the opacity needs to be turned down. Now in the new group, on the new layer, we're going to pick black. We're going to keep with four. Some details might be a bit smaller, but we're going to keep with four for now, because with emotes you want thick lines that are noticeable. Not too thick, but thick. Alright, so this is actually an outside line, and we can take off this, as you saw we had this on for the transparency of the lines, take that off. We don't need that anymore. And also, we turned on Lazy Natsumi. If you guys don't know what Lazy Natsumi is, you're using Photoshop in not the most recent uh, version. You won't have this sort of, or this, this sort of smoothing of the curves. Lazy Natsumi does that, and a bunch more things. So, if you're having trouble with proper lines that are not curving correctly, I would completely suggest this. Now we're just going to give a sort of thick line to the outside of the emote. Any outside bits, so we're not going to color inside, we're not going to separate the items by lines quite yet. Just going to give the outside a nice thick line. Alright, our thick outer line, good. As you can tell, it goes around the emote, touching all the transparent spaces, which is what you want. So now, we make a new layer, and we're actually going to take the layer and put it below the outline layer. We're going to want to keep it completely black. In my emotes, I keep it completely black. I don't change the outline layer at all once it's done. But this layer will go below so that even if, you know, say we go through this a little and we change the color to like, say we go through it and we do like a purple, the black, as you can see here, will still be consistent and over it. So we'll keep that black line we're sort of after. I'm just gonna make a new layer there. These lines don't need to be as thick. They don't need to be as noticeable because they will be over colors. So you don't need to go over them a bunch, just keep it to what you think will look good. Just do what you honestly think is the best for your art. And as I said, I'm actually going to make a new layer here since we're on the glasses. We're going to have the glasses completely on its own layer.
And then with that, line work is done. And same with the sketches. We can turn off the sketch layer. We don't need it anymore. And then just above the sketch layer and the line work layer, just in between both of those, will be the color layer. Now this is going to be a lot of main focus here. We're going to try and get colors that actually look like our colors, but we're not going to color pick because you can color pick if you want, if you're really going for a specific color, but it's honestly better to just come up with a color on your own. That sort of looks pretty similar to what you're after. So I do a base color at first and I start with the sort of skin color. Do this, and what I have selected right now is Quick Selection Tool. We're going to quickly run our selection, sort of circle over this, and with this we have just a good selection of all the colors. Now we've got our base color, we do another layer, and I try and keep like about one color per layer. Should be fine. And with that, we have all the flat colors. 